This is an ESP32 C6 development board and it's packed with features. A vibrant 172 by 320 pixels color display, a built-in SD card reader, and all for an incredibly low price. I'll walk you through two complete projects I built for this board, with step-by-step -step instructions you can reuse. First, we'll build a video player that reads videos directly from the onboard SD card. The screen supports over 260,000 color, and yes, you can even convert your own videos, including ones recorded on your iPhone. I'll show you exactly how in just a moment. Next, I'll show you a crypto price monitor built with LVGL version 9. It's lightweight, clean, and very easy to set up. I will show you how in a moment. You can grab this ESP32 C6 board from Amazon or AliExpress, where it's a little bit cheaper. I've added links in the description below. I ordered two of them. This one is the pre-soldered version from AliExpress, made by Waveshare. If you'd rather skip the soldering iron like I do, make sure to get the pre-soldered version too. I also ordered the exact same board from Amazon. They didn't offer a pre-soldered version, but it arrived incredibly fast, just at a higher price. When you first plug the board into a USB power source, it runs a built-in demo right away. There's also an RGB LED under the panel, with a clear acrylic diffuser that creates a nice lighting effect. Now let's see step by step on how to use the video player with this board. To start, here is a demo of the video player. It's a simple project, but the playback is surprisingly smooth and impressive. There is no sound output from this board and no touchscreen. Every video is streamed directly from the SD card and the playback remains very smooth and impressive. The colors look great on this little display. There is almost no limit on the amount of video you can put on this 32GB microSD card. Here's a clip of my cat Winston, recorded on my iPhone and converted to play on this board. Both portrait and landscape videos are supported. The screen resolution is 172 by 320 so it's naturally 16.9 in portrait and 9.16 in landscape. While there's no touchscreen, the boot button on the left acts as a handy input. You can press it anytime to skip to the next video on the SD card. You get the video player code on my GitHub repository. The link is in the video description. Click here to download the code as a zip file. It's going to be copied in your download folder. Extract the content of the zip file. Remove the dash main part in the folder name because the folder name and the sketch name must be the same. Before looking at the code, we need to prepare the micro SD card to store the videos. I'm using a 32 GB card for this tutorial and it's important to format it properly. I recommend using the SD card formatter application for this, which you can download from the link I've provided in the video description. Use this software to format your micro SD card as FAT32. Inside the downloaded project, you'll find a folder called SD Content, containing an MJPEG folder with videos prepared for our little board's display. I've created these to showcase your board nicely. So just copy this entire MJPEG folder directly onto your formatted SD card. In a moment I will show you how to prepare your own video file to be played on this ESP32 C6 development board. Safely eject the microSD card from your computer. And carefully insert it into the SD card slot on your development board. The fit is a bit tight, so take your time. Now let's open the project by double clicking on the sketch to open it in the Arduino IDE. I am using version 2.3.5 of the Arduino IDE. In the board manager, search ESP32 and make sure you are using version 3.2.0 from Espressif. I tested my cone on this version. If you don't see the ESP32 by Espressif boards, go to File, then Preferences, and paste this URL in this box. I have included this URL 
in the video description. Next, use a good quality USB-C cable to connect your board to your computer. In this menu, choose Select Other Board and Port and search for the ESP32C6 Dev Module as the board type. And select the port that was detected by the Arduino IDE. The only board configuration you have to change for this project is to enable UCDC on boot. This will allow the board to show up as a USB serial port as soon as it powers on to see serial monitor messages coming from the code. We need now to install three libraries. Go to the library manager and search for dev device pins. Install version 0.0.3 I have tested my code with this version. This library provides the pins definition for the ESP32C6 board we are using. Now search for GFX library for Arduino. This is a graphic library that supports the display on our little board. Finally search for JPEG deck installed version 1.8.2. The code uses this library to show video frames using JPEG images. All that's left to do is click the upload button. Be patient as the code may take several minutes to compile. If you encounter compilation errors, carefully double check your library's versions and board configurations or revisit this chapter if needed. You can also open an issue in my GitHub repository if you need further assistance. The code reads the list of videos from the SD card and plays them one after another. If you want to skip ahead, just press the boot button on the left side of the board. It jumps straight to the next video. In the serial monitor, you get information on the files being played. The only thing you need to configure in the code is the number of videos on your SD card. In my case, I've set it to 20. You can easily modify the code to better suit your preferences or adapt it to your own project. If you enjoyed this video and want to support my channel, please like the video and subscribe. And consider buying me a coffee. There's a link in the description below. Every coffee really helps me create more tutorials like this one. Thanks for your support. Now let's see how you can prepare your own videos to be played on this amazing development board. Download and install the FFmpeg software. I've included the link in the description. Several versions are available for different operating systems. I'm using this version for Windows 11. Click to download the zip file. Now extract the content of the zip file. FFmpeg is a command line utility. Go back to the Arduino IDE and open the included README file, where I've provided the exact command line example you need to use with FFmpeg. The videos need to be converted to MJPEG. You can convert MP4 on MOV files. Keep these options as they are, otherwise the video file produced will not play on the board. You specified here the video file that you want to convert. You can adjust the quality and frame rate parameters to fine tune playback smoothness. And here you specify the converted video file name. Make sure it ends with a .mjpeg extension. I have provided three different commands. One that rescales the width of the video to 172 pixels, the width of our screen, automatically adjusting height to keep the original aspect ratio. This one forces the video to be exactly the size of our screen. 172 by 320 pixels. This can cause the video to be stretched. The last command is to rotate a video source that is landscape to portrait, so it played correctly on the board. Let's convert the video of my cat Winston that I took using my iPhone. I just copy the video to the bin folder where the command line utility is located. Open the bin folder, right click inside it, and select Open in Terminal. I will use the command to rescale the video to 172 pixels.
Once converted, copy the MJPEG video file created to the MJPEG folder on the SD card. You can now enjoy your homemade videos on this beautiful small screen. Now let's see step by step on how to use the Crypto Price Monitor application. Let's start with a demo of the project. The app first connects to your Wi Fi, then fetches live prices for three cryptocurrencies from Binance. I'll show you how to change the symbols later if you want to track different ones. At the top, we have a chart displaying the price trend of one selected symbol. Below that, you see all three symbols with their live prices and percentage change since the app started. This project is built with LVGL version 9, and I didn't use any visual designer. Just straightforward LVGL API calls to create the entire interface. You get the crypto price monitor code on my GitHub repository. The link is in the video description. Click here to download the code as a zip file. It's going to be copied in your download folder. Extract the content of the zip file. Remove the dash main part in the folder name. Open the project folder and rename the file secrets underscore rename.h to secrets.h. Then open it in Notepad and enter your Wi Fi network's SSID and password. These credentials are used by the app to connect to the internet and fetch live prices from Binance. Now let's open the project by double clicking on the sketch to open it in the Arduino ID. In this menu, choose Select Other Board and Port and set the board type as ESP32C6 Dev Module and set the port that was detected by the Arduino IDE. We need to enable UCDC on boot and change the partition scheme to UJAP because the code with LVGL is quite large. We need now to install three libraries. If you go to the library manager and select the libraries installed, you should see the dev device pins and GFX library for Arduino that we installed previously for the video player project. Now search for LVGL. Install version 9.2.2. You do not need to configure LVGL. The project already contains the configuration file that is already set up for the Crypto Monitor application. Now you can click to upload the code. This will take several minutes since the LVGL library is quite large, so be patient. And if you encounter compilation errors, carefully double check your library's version and board configuration. You can also open an issue on my GitHub repository if you need further assistance. When the crypto monitor is running, you get information on the serial monitor like the API calls to Binance. Now let's take a look at the code. This section is where you can change the crypto symbols you want to track. The interface is designed to display three symbols by default that you can change. You can add more, but you'll need to adjust the layout using LVGL. Here you can define the index of the symbol to chart. It's currently set to zero, which means the first symbol in the list will be charted at the top. You have now mastered this amazing ESP32C6 development board with built-in color screen and SD card reader. I hope this tutorial has inspired you to create even more amazing projects. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It truly helps support the channel and lets me create more tutorials like this one. Thanks again for watching.